The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. From the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Where would you like to live if you were free to choose where you live? What criteria would you use in making your choice? There are many factors to be considered in choosing a place to live, like the environment, the opportunity for livelihood, the distance to schools, markets, and churches, the neighbors will you have, the cleanliness, the access to water and electricity. In other words, what you are looking for is peace of mind. In sending His Son, God also chose a place to live, but He chose a small country, very small country compared to its neighbors. It was his own country, the one he had prepared over a long period through covenants. And these covenants were renewed and maintained by his people through the giving of laws and the sending of the prophets. And within that country, God chose an unknown place, Nazareth. And in today's Gospel, in the Gospel of the Annunciation, we see how God chose the Blessed Virgin Mary to become the mother of His Son, our Savior. But what is it about Mary that made him, her the chosen one of God. There are two introductions to Mary in today's Gospel. The first one comes from the angel Gabriel. The angel Gabriel declared that Mary is favored by God and the Lord is with her. In the translation in today's Gospel, the version used is Mary full of grace. And the Lord is with you. That the Blessed Virgin Mary is declared to be full of grace. 
And this proclamation revealed the truth that Mary is truly holy and safe or free from any stain of sin. And this is in consonant with the doctrine of the church that the Blessed Virgin Mary was conceived immaculately, that she was conceived without sin according to the grace and power of God, to be a fitting dwelling for the holy child of God. And the second introduction of the gospel to Mary comes from the Blessed Mother herself, from the statement of the Blessed Mother, when she said, I am the handmaid of the Lord. And she followed this by declaring her readiness to comply whatever God desired for her. And this kind of obedience that the Blessed Virgin Mary displayed guarantees that the Son of God, the Savior, will be born in a peaceful dwelling that Jesus would inherit no longer the disobedience of Eve, but the obedience of the Blessed Mother, the obedience of Mary. Although it was a privilege for Mary to be the first home, the dwelling of Jesus in the world, but Jesus offers His presence to each one of us. And there is no better opportunity for this offering than now as we are in the season of preparation for the commemoration of His birth. What do we need then to become worthy home or dwelling of Jesus? The standard of God for His dwelling remains unchanged. Like Mary, we also need to be free from sin. Therefore, in our reception of the sacraments, including the Holy Eucharist, we are expected to first repent of our sins. And if necessary, we are invited to approach the sacrament of reconciliation. Like Mary, we are expected to be obedient to God. This is the condition of Jesus. When He said, Whoever has my commands and keeps them, is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. Brothers and sisters, it is an honor to be chosen as the dwelling place of Jesus. Why would we deny ourselves this great honor? Let us make our hearts and minds worthy dwelling. Of Je for Jesus. Let us make our families the primary environment for experiencing His love, acceptance, understanding, and forgiveness. Let us build our communities and uphold peace and justice therein. Let us prove the good news to be true, that the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us.